Hi family, it's so good to be in front of you guys today. Um, this is my very first YouTube video, so I'm a first timer and I'm so glad that you guys are joining on me on my very first time. And I pray that I'll have more of these moments with all of you. Um, definitely just kind of walking in whatever God calls me to do. And I wrote a book, Perfectly Loved, and the reason why this video is being put in place today is because of the questions that I've received since the re, re, um, the release of the book back in November of 2014. So I've received amazing feedback, awesome feedback. Thank you so much. I love you guys so much for all the amazing words you've said and mostly for the way the book has demonstrated itself by saving relationships in your lives and helping you guys walk into your purpose. I don't. I couldn't have asked for more. Even if just one person told me it saved their lives, I would have known that that book was written for you. And it was written for me because it saves my life daily. I'm just so thankful for all of it. And I have received lots of questions since writing the book. And of course, I can't couldn't write everything in the book. And I've gotten questions about different chapters. But overall, overarching of the whole process of writing the book and releasing it, the main question I've gotten is, what caused you to write the book, and how can I do that? Not necessarily write a book, but how can I walk into my own purpose? How can I get over my own fears and actually do this thing that I know God's called me to do something too? Help me get there. And I want to help. And I, and I cannot give people a step-by-step, -step, one, two, three, four, of this is how you do it, this is how you get there. I can tell you my story, but everybody's timeline is going to be different. Um, so never think that you have to work in the same time or fashion that I work in. Um, God knows you and God will meet you where you are. The title of this first video is Healing Into Your Purpose. Um, because there's lots of things that will get you into your purpose. But one thing for sure, if you are not healed, you can't get there. And that is because you might try, try as you might. But you will be crippled in going forth in your purpose if you have not healed some of those things from your past that are still holding you back. And also if you haven't learned how to heal. Because over your life, there's going to be multiple things you have to heal from over and over and over again. Healing isn't a one day thing. It's an every single day thing. People are going to hurt you every single day. Things are going to bother you every single day. So you have to learn you and you have to build a relationship with God that allows you to be able to renew and heal every day. Because especially when you work walking your purpose, things get even harder. So you definitely have to know how to heal. And before you can even truly start and be successful, you got to heal some of that stuff from your past. Um, I talk in my book about um, my first introductory chapter about how I was at this state of brokenness before the um, revelation of this book was given to me. And when I say state of brokenness, I'm not saying I was just depressed or you were just sad or you were feeling bad. Um, yes, I was feeling all of those things, but a state of brokenness is different. A state of brokenness is when you literally realize that no one else can save you. No one else can fix this issue. You can't fix it yourself. The only person, only one you can call on to fix this is Jesus Christ himself. That is brokenness. Because sometimes when we're sad, we're still trying to work it out in our head, trying to fix the problem in our head, um, trying to find a solution, call our friends, call our family, trying to find out how to fix it. We're still walking on our own strength. Brokenness is when you realize, I don't have any strength. I have tried. I have done all the things I know how to do, Lord. You are all I have left. And that's where God wants us to be. He wants us to be at a state of brokenness. And not just at one point in our life. Brokenness is continual. It's not only going to be this one point of brokenness, I walk into my purpose, and everything's great. No. Brokenness continues to happen at different states in our life as God shifts us to a new level and a new understanding of him and a new relationship with him because God doesn't ever want our relationship to become generic or content. He wants to always move you to the next step and sometimes moving to that next step means being broken in this step because sometimes we get so excited with ourselves, content, and we got it, we're good and God wants to remind us, hey, 
You can't do this without me. So it puts you in a broken place to remind you that, hey, to get to this next step, you're going to need me. And it was, I didn't know that at the time when I went through this level of brokenness because previous to that, I had been at a horrible level of brokenness. Um, and that's what led me to come to Christ in the first place. And then I ended up at another one, and I was like, God, why is this happening again? And I thought those days were over, and that was not the case. Um, so I'm going to share with you guys even deeper my level of brokenness and what I was going through at the time. And thankfully for me, I actually journal. And so I can literally go back to that day. Um, and tell you without a shot of a doubt how I was feeling and what was going on in my life. And um, I don't have to try to remember or recall what was going on. So I'm thankful for that. So that day, May 5th, 2012, I actually wrote a poem. And I am not a poet whatsoever. <laughs> I don't really write poems, only very rarely, maybe a couple a year. And um, this day, I was sad enough to write a poem. And so I want to share that with you. I wrote three of them um, over a few days span. And then three days later, I got the revelation of the book. So the first poem wrote on May 5th, 2012. I was literally in my room crying. I remember that. I was just devastated. I had texted my friends. I had actually gone to a girlfriend's house before that and was crying with her. She couldn't help me. Cried to my parents. They couldn't help me. Came home, cried in my bed, and wrote this poem <laughs> to God. Just asking him, what the heck is going on? Fix this. So that's why I said to him, um... Where do you put the pain? Do you bottle it up or lock it in? Does it evaporate, disintegrate, blow up? What happens when it comes back? What happens when someone pulls the weak string once more? I thought it was gone. I thought the past was erased. I thought the pain was irretrievable again. I'm not fascinated with my past. It hurts very bad. It takes me to my lowest point, the place I never wanted to get back to, the place where I'm unimportant and I don't matter, where everyone else's happiness is more important than my own. I thought that place was long gone. I thought it was destroyed. But it came back. Oh, why? Why did it come back? And so this was me. I was really pissed at God at the time. Like, what the heck, Lord? Oh, I just didn't know. <laughs> I was like, what the heck, Lord? Why did it come back? Why am I upsetting it? Then that was May 5th and May 6th, the new day. I think it was Sunday. And I wrote more and I said, um, this is a new poem. I wrote two shorter poems. It says, why do people always treat me this way? Below the gutter where the fleas hide. Nowhere to go, no place to put the pride. Give, give, give. People will take, take, take. No one thinks to give back. And so, of course, I was feeling used and abused at that moment. Um, and then the next um, poem that I wrote under that was this. A card to say I love you, a kiss to say I miss you, a flower to say just thinking of you, a hug to say you're special to me, some things that show you're important to others, some things to show how much you mean, some things to show that they just can't see having a good life without you near, some things to show I love you. Despite the noise over the crowd, it's great to show I need you. Some of these things I'm crying for, I'm crying out loud. And so I was begging God for... For somebody to show me some love, to show me that they needed me, to show me that they were in, that I was important. My friendships were being torn apart. My um, family was having a hard time. My aunt had died a couple weeks before. The guy that was in my life had totally broke everything that I was thought we were leading into, and um, everything was just happening all at once, and I couldn't take it. I um, was ready to leave my job, ready to leave the city I was in, ready to walk into something new. I didn't want to work in insurance anymore. And I was mad that I kept waking up in the same place I was always waking up. And this was just the day it all fell down. And I, my heart was wrenching. It just felt like I, like I was totally dying. Like there was nothing here left. Like I had nothing left. Um, and I know that there there might be people right now who are in that place this very second as they're watching this video who are feeling totally 
removed from life and feeling unwanted and unneeded and unimportant and unnecessary. And there might be people who have felt this way before. And so I want you to hone into that. I want you to realize that and be real with yourself. If no one else, be real with yourself about how you're feeling right now or how you having had that feeling in the past. Because um, that's what's going to help you get into your healing. Um, so the next day, after I wrote all these things, and I went to church on Sunday, May 6th, and um, I immediately, I just had to get out of Gainesville, because the other part of me was, Gainesville's the issue. It's just Gainesville. If I wasn't in this city, this wouldn't be happening. It's just, Gainesville's the problem. I need to get out of here. So I left to get to as close of a home as I, I was from Fort Lauderdale. Um, my parents were in Fort Lauderdale. I couldn't get that far. So I went to Tampa where my brother and my sister-in-law live with my niece. And I tried to get as close to home as I possibly could. And to people who I, I knew loved me. You know, I had no doubt in my mind. My mom, my dad, and my brother loved me. Um, just everybody else didn't love me. And even with them, I, I wasn't getting enough. But I wanted to be close to anyone. Um, who I thought could fix it. So I went to their house and they had to go to work that Monday. So I stayed at home with my niece um, by myself and I had to keep myself from crying because I'm babysitting my niece. She don't want to see me crying. She's the one who's supposed to be crying. I'm supposed to be changing her diapers. So I couldn't cry. I turned on Joseph Prince. I literally laid out on the couch. She was in her playpen playing. playing. And I was just so depressed and so sad. And I just kept looking at her like, I wish I was your age. <laughs> and I wish I could just sit up and play with you all day because you don't make me mad. You don't make me angry. There's nothing this little girl can do to hurt me. I was just in love with her and, and just thought she was the only thing I had. And Joseph Prince was on and he was talking. And it's crazy because God truly draws close to you when you're hurting. He sees your pain, he knows your pain, um, and he comes close to those people who are hurting. He draws nigh to them. He drew nigh to me that day. And there's no sh no doubt in my mind that he wanted me to come to him. And he made me realize something about him that I never knew before. And I'm going to read to you the Bible verse that saved my life to get me to the place I am today. Without it, without hearing Joseph Prince saying that, maybe I would have heard it somewhere else another day. I think God would probably save my life eventually regardless. <laughs> but that day, that verse was what I needed to hear to remind me of his love for me. Um, and so I'm going to go over that with you next. The verse I heard from Joseph Prince that day is actually Job 14, 7 through 9, and it reads as this. At least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground, and its stump die in the soil. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. So again, this is Job 14, 7 through 9, just in case anyone wanted to go back to that verse. So what was so great about this verse is that it tells you a tree is broken down. Um, its limbs chopped off, its branches removed, but because it's so close to the river, it grows back again, so the water makes it come back to life. And what's so amazing is that is how God is in all of our lives, that when we're hurting and we're in pain, that his water, as long as we stay close to him, the living water, Jesus Christ, we will be renewed, we will be refreshed, we will be restored. and. At that time in my life, I was broken, and I didn't get healed just from hearing this verse, but it helped me realize who could heal me. It helped me realize that if I just stayed with Him, if I just stayed with God, if I just kept in His Word, that He would renew me, that He would grow me back again. All my limbs had been chopped off. I felt like I was dying, but I wasn't. His water was flowing through me out of me making new fruit he was in me and this was my first time realizing or i had been told it many times but it was my first time truly taking in the fact that God lived within me that his love was in me and that he would continually restore me and grow me to be 
brand new again. Um, and so I didn't heal right after that. It still took time, but that realization brought me into new things. And so went home, went back to Gainesville, went back to work and all that stuff, and started saying, you know, I'm going to put my life, my trust um, in God and start doing things knowing that he is with me the whole time and knowing that he will heal me and it's going to be a process but I knew who could do it and that was the beginning of me getting out of my brokenness this was May 7th May 8th and actually before I get to May 8th um, the end of the day May 7th before I left my brother's house went back to Gainesville the next morning to go to work um, I also read another verse um, it's about storing up your treasures in heaven and it's by Matthew 620 and it says lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be too so that day I wrote out all of the things that I wanted all the things that had been stolen from me that I felt had been taken from me and I decided to store them in heaven to put my treasures up here with God where I knew he would take care of them someone I could trust who wouldn't let them get lost from me um, I gave him my future I gave him my future children my future marriage I gave him my present I gave him my parents I gave him my friends I gave him all of that I stored them in heaven where neither moth nor rust can destroy them or take them away from me Sort them there. And the great thing about being Christian, you can have heaven on earth. Because what is the, the amazing prayer that we all say, the Lord's Prayer, as it do on earth as it is done in heaven. And we pray that every single day. And if you put your things in heaven, if you entrust them to God, put your treasures there, he will give them to you. He will protect them. And you won't only have heaven and wait till heaven comes to get everything you wanted. You can have that on earth. Um, so I stored everything there. And then the next day, May 8th, I decided to store everything up there. And I had realized this new relationship that I had with God. And realized a new step in God. A new personality of God. Um, that I didn't know before this moment of brokenness um, and again I wasn't completely healed but I knew something about God that I didn't know the day before and that was that he lived in me that he loved me unconditionally and that although I was broken he was he would continually restore me um, so this is what I wrote um, on May 8th I got this revelation and it was so simple so simple about the book I wrote, God put something in me, something big, something lovely, something love. God taught me how to love, teach people how to love, teach me how to love. God will write it. And I wrote that on the 8th, and I cannot play with y'all. This is written on the 8th. God will write it. I hadn't wrote a single word to go into the book yet. Um, and he said it would be done and he told me that he would teach me he had already taught me pieces of him pieces of his love and while I was writing it he would teach me more and I would be able to teach others and that was May 8th and that revelation is coming to pass and that promise is coming to pass but I didn't even couldn't even walk in that promise if I hadn't had that level of brokenness that taught me a new level of him that I didn't know before and taught me the need to teach others that because I was so hurt and in so much pain because I felt like other people didn't know how to love um, and weren't loving me right. And I didn't know how to love either, to tell you the truth. So <laughs> I'm just so thankful for that. And so I say all of that to tell you that um, while I wa found out my purpose, um, one of my purposes in life was to write the book. And while I was writing the book, I killed through it because in writing the book I had to read the Bible and get really really close to God and really learn how much he loved me and he wanted to reconcile those relationships that had gone so awry and I couldn't have done that if I hadn't have gotten to that level of brokenness and it makes me thankful for May 6th and May 7th 
and how sucky they were. I am so thankful they happened. Because they didn't, I wouldn't be doing this video in front of you today. And so, I tell all of this story to tell you again. Healing will lead you into your purpose. So today, your lesson to take away is figure out what part of you is crippled. So it's kind of like running in a track meet. I ran track and one time I had this hip flexor problem really, really bad and I kept running on it. Kept running, kept running on it. Limping. It was horrible. And I just compensated with my other leg. And so then my other leg became hurt in limp. And I couldn't run at all because I put so much pressure on my other leg trying to compensate for the leg that had the hip flexor um, issue. So what I'm telling you guys is you guys probably have, you might have some crippled legs, one leg, and you're compensating with the other one. And so things aren't happening the way they should be. You're not talking to people nicely because you're a little bit upset about something that you might have thought you forgot. You, you forgot it. You wanted to forget it, but it's still there and you haven't dealt with it. Um, or you're spending a lot of time working all the time trying not to think about it. Or you're drinking alcohol or partying and clubbing just so you don't have to sit at home by yourself and think about all the things that you're really truly upset about, but you haven't let yourself truly handle those things and heal from those things and because you haven't done that you're unable to truly get to where God wants you to be and truly be able to save other people's lives so what you need to do today is think about those things think about what it is that you have not dealt with from your past any unforgiveness in your heart any struggles that you may have had at work in your career um, sometimes when I talk about those things when people hurt us at work we Honestly, I thought like it didn't happen because it's not cool to cry at work or be sad about things at work. You have to get over it. Don't just get over it. It's there. Remember those things. Figure out what they are. Give them to God. So after you figure out what it is, store up your treasures. Make a list of your treasures that you want God to take care of. And it can be funny things, simple things. I told God that I want a French crepe. I'm putting a French crepe in heaven because I love French grapes. And so I put one in heaven on my list that day. Um, so store up your treasures. Give him everything that you want to protect that you don't want to get rusted. Um, all the promises that he's giving you. Put them in heaven as your treasure because God won't let them be destroyed. And once you do that, believe in your heart that he is taking care of them. He's keeping them for you. And not just so that you can have them when you get to heaven. You don't have to wait to die to get everything that you want in life. You can have those things right here, right now, on earth, as it is in heaven. If you just believe, and you can walk in your purpose. So, the first step is healing. And I'm so glad I could talk to all of you guys today. Um, and hopefully you heal yourself so that you can walk into your purpose. And then, soon I'll have another video to help you with the next steps after you've done some healing. Thank you all. Have a great Sunday.